Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial system. Now we have x squared plus 3x plus y equals 23 and x squared y plus 3xy equals 22. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'll be presenting two methods and I'm also going to show you a graph at the end and we'll kind of talk about it. All right, great. So let's start with the first method. And the first method will kind of give you a better idea about what the graph looks like. So we'll have an idea what kind of functions we're dealing with here. First of all, if you look at the first equation, you hopefully easily see that we can isolate y, right? So let's go ahead and subtract x squared plus 3x from both sides. And that'll give us y equals 23 minus x squared minus 3x. You could also write the x squared first, but it doesn't matter, no big deal. And from the second equation, notice that we could also factor out a y and isolate it, but let's go ahead and factor it first. If you take out y, you're gonna get x squared plus 3x, and that is equal to 22. Awesome. So here's what we can do. We can isolate y. y is gonna be 22 over x squared plus 3x. And now we have two equations for y, the first one being this and the second one being this. And since they're both equal to y, if two things are equal to the same thing, then they are equal, right? So in other words, we can safely say that 22 divided by x squared plus 3x equals 23 minus x squared minus 3x. Awesome. So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and cross multiply and then put it all together and come up with a hopefully nice equation. It's not going to be that nice because this is the first method. Obviously the second method will be nicer and I can clearly think of a third method which is kind of similar to the maybe not second but kind of first. Anyways, let's just stick with two methods here. So if you cross multiply you're going to get 22 equals x squared. Let's go ahead and distribute the x squared first. 23 x squared minus x to the fourth minus 3x cubed. And then let's distribute the 3x plus 69x minus 3x cubed minus 9x squared. I have x to the fourth. Uh, let's put everything on the left-hand side so that x to the fourth becomes positive. So we have x to the fourth. And then I have negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x cubed makes 6, negative 6, but on the left-hand side, that's going to be a positive 6x cubed. And then I have some x squared, right? 23 minus 9 is 14, but that's going to be negative 14 on the left-hand side. And then finally, we have the 69x, which we can subtract and get negative 69x. And of course, we already have our constant there, 22, which is just going to stay there. Awesome. <laughs> well, not so awesome because, come on, this is a quartic equation. Do you seriously want to use the quartic formula, which is super, super complicated? But with certain methods... You know, you can just go ahead and turn this into a cubic equation and then solve that cubic equation by using some method, which was invented by some Italian guy, and then so on and so forth, right? Okay, so, anyways, uh, one of the things we can possibly do is if x is an integer, then hopefully it is, but if it may not be, uh, we can go ahead and uh, kind of use rational root theorem. If one of the roots is rational, we can kind of look at divisors of 22 or factors uh, which are potential uh, candidates so kind of like plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 11 plus minus 22 so those are the candidates good luck with that and then they may not work at the end right so if that doesn't work we can also try to factor this but one of the things we should probably do is get rid of the x cubed first and then write this um, into it, like kind of like a product of two quadratics. I think it's called Descartes method or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember that. So uh, basically get rid of, to get rid of the x cubed, you should replace x with something like y minus. So here's what you need to do. Divide the coefficient of x cubed by the highest power, which is 4, with, and put a minus sign. So it will be this. And obviously, this is not going to be that nice. So you're going to be dealing with a lot of difficulties, especially with fractions, so on and so forth. So that's super duper painful. Hopefully, you see that 
that method is not very elegant, right? And there's a reason why uh, there's a second method which is much more elegant, and let's talk about that. And of course, after the second method, we can kind of go back and uh, revisit first method and see how we could proceed a little differently to make things easier. I, uh, easier. I know what you guys are, some of you, some of you are thinking, hey, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I deliberately avoided some of the easier paths, okay? <laughs> Forgive me for that. All right, so here's what we're going to do to proceed. I'm going to rewrite my system. And then... I'm going to manipulate this a little bit to get what I want because this problem is, as some people say, contrived. Okay, so how do you uh, get the trick? So here's the trick. First of all, I noticed that I can take out an xy here. Let's do it. If I take out xy, I end up with x plus 3. That's it, x plus 3. That's it, right? Okay, great. I, I was expecting to get more terms, but that's it. Anyways, so I get this. And from the second equation, here's what I can do. I can't completely factor it, but I can take these two terms and factor out an x and write it as x times x plus 3 plus y equals 23. So this is my new system. And guess what? This is actually in really good shape. I'll tell you why in a little bit. So if you go ahead and do the following, put the x and x plus 3 together. Now here's what's going on. Let me tell you. Here's a trick. Notice that x times x plus 3 is kind of like together. Then they make up an entity. And then, then I, y is being added. So if I put these two together, then I'll be getting the same thing. So let me rewrite my equation that way. x times x plus 3 times y equals 22. x times x plus 3 plus y is 23. Hopefully, you see what I see. And if you do, here's what I'm talking about. Let's call this x times x plus 3 thing another variable, like z. And we can stick with the y, because it's already a good variable, right? y is a good variable. So from first equation, this is also z, by the way. First equation gives us y z equals 22. I'm kind of obsessed. I, I need to write everything in alphabetical order most of the time. And then y plus z is 23. This is one of the nicest systems that you can get besides y plus z and y minus z, which is never going to happen, by the way. But anyways, <laughs> this is pretty easy. Now, you're thinking, hopefully, uh, finding two numbers whose product is 22 and whose sum is 23. And guess what? Those numbers are 22 and 1, and of course, vice versa. Great. This is awesome, isn't it? Don't you think? So we got the y value right away, or y is 1 and z is 22. But what is z? z is x times x plus 3. So we get the following system. y is 22, z is 1, or y is 1, z is 22. And again, this is super duper awesome because I got z here, and let's go ahead and uh, write our equation one more time. We got y equals 22, that gives us the value of y right away, but we also got x times x plus 3 equals 22, which gives us x squared plus 3x minus 22 equals 0, and from here x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4ac plus 88, and that's not going to be a super duper nice answer, but guess what? That's going to work. Okay, so those are the x values for y equals 22. And if y is equal to 1, this is for y equals 22. And if y is equal to 1 and z is equal to 22, then we get the following. Because x times x plus 3 is, wait a minute, I think I messed up. y is 22, y is 1. Okay, y is 1. So why is 22? Okay, I, I messed up on this one. This, this belongs to the other one. Okay, here we go. It's for this one. Now we're doing y equals 22 and z is 1. y is 22 and z is 1. Sorry about that. And in this case, uh, we get x times x plus 3 equals 1. x squared plus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And from here, we get x equals negative 3 plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that's going to give you square root of 13. And that's going to be the end of this story. Let's go ahead and take a look at the equation. I mean the graph real quick. And we'll end up with that. Oh, by the way, the, there's a problem here that 
we're not going to be able to accept these solutions because these are negative x values. Does x have to be positive, by the way? No, I don't think there's a requirement for x to be positive. But anyways, you get the idea, and this gives us some of the solutions at least, right? So here's the thing. Uh, if you isolate y, you get a parabola. If you isolate y here, you get a rational equation. This graph doesn't necessarily reflect that, but if you look at the zoomed in version, you notice the parabola and rational function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.